Hello, I'm Peter Leach, Senior Editor of the Journal of Commerce, and I'm here today in our offices in Newark with Al Morrow, who's the exe Acting Executive Director of the Port of Long Beach. There's a lot going on at the Port of Long Beach, which is the second largest port in the U.S. and is closing in on Los Angeles as very possibly uh, tying it for the biggest container volume. And Al, I wonder if you could tell us what's going on uh, as you prepare to handle more and more big ships. And about two years ago, our Board of Harbor Commissioners um, uh, made a commitment and recognized that we needed to get going on infrastructure projects in order to be the port of the future and what the industry was delivering. In terms of infrastructure, we have the Gerald Desmond Bridge Replacement Project. This is a, a project that's been labeled by the federal government as a project of national significance. Because Forty percent of the products, the cargo, waterborne cargo that comes into the U.S. passes over that bridge. Right now it's two lanes in each direction more or less uh, and it's too, too low over the water. The air draft is only 157 feet. The new bridge is going to be three lanes in each direction with shoulders at a lower grade so the trucks can traverse much more efficiently. It's also going to be 205 feet above the water so the, so the largest vessels in, in anybody's fleet will fit under those bridges that bridge. The, uh, the project's uh, about $1.1 billion, and again, this is part of the investment the Port of Long Beach is making. Being a part of a national significance project, we were able to secure federal money and some state money, which we need desperately in order to build these kinds of projects, but the port's commitment is in the tune of about $400, $400 million for that. Another project uh, underway, several actually, rail projects. We recognize that our rail capacity needs to be improved. Uh, the, the big ships that are coming in have um, cargo for the local market there. We're a very, very big local consumer market there. Uh, we needed uh, 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 to build more rail infrastructure and increase that capacity. So over about the next eight years, we're going to build about a billion dollars worth of, of rail infrastructure. Now, what's going on in the port itself with the Middle Harbor project? Boy, that's a great project. This is, uh, this is a, um, what we feel is going to be one of the most innovative, maybe the most innovative, highly technologically advanced and clean, environmentally clean terminal. It's, it's significant because if there ever is going to be a terminal big ship ready, that's the model we're following. These large vessels come in, that's a lot of cargo at one time. So you need a large land mass in order to move that cargo efficiently. It's going to have a center uh, core that'll have automatic stacking cranes, which will be uh, computerized, very uh, computer driven, that'll key up those boxes so that they key either exit the terminal via rail or by truck, but it'll be queued up so that that wait time is very efficient. Uh, overall, the terminal will handle over 3 million TEUs a year. Uh, it's uh, a partnership we've made with OOCL and Long Beach Container Terminal, LBCT. The port's investing about $1.2 billion for the infrastructure, and uh, OOCL and LBCT is investing uh, $500 million. Now, whenever you build something in Southern California, you face a lot of challenges from the environmental point of view. What are you doing to <laughs> mitigate the environmental impact of, let's say, the Middle Harbor Project and the new rail uh, spurs? Oh, those are great questions. Back in 2005, uh, we developed, our Board of Harbor Commissioners uh, recognized that in order to uh, continue to operate and, and grow, we needed to be sensitive to the environment. We needed to be good stewards of the environment. So they adopted what we call the Clean Air Action Plan, and there are several elements of that. One was the, uh, the clean truck program, where progressively we, we put restrictions on, through our leases of the trucks, the age of the trucks that could enter our, our terminals. We were hopeful to reduce pollution from trucks by 50% in five years. We reduced it 80% in less than five years. So the clean truck program was one. We also impose environmental covenants on our terminal operations, and these are things such as using alternative fuels in yard equipment, electrification of a lot of traditionally diesel burning equipment. Uh, the Middle Harbor Project's an excellent example. Instead of diesel burning yard equipment, these automatic stacking cranes are, are electric powered. Frankly, the community has, uh, has embraced what we're doing and, and uh, this is something we tout all over the world as uh, the green port. And recently, uh, the, the, the G6 Alliance, which is six mm -hmm. large carriers, which are bonded together in a, in a vessel sharing agreement. These alliances are going to start calling our ports with bigger and bigger ships. 
what do you think the impact is going to be mm -hmm. uh, from both the P3 and the G6? Yeah, these, these are uh, two entities that are definitely on our radar. Mm -hmm. And frankly, what we're doing is we're, we're developing ourselves to be the port of the future. The, the largest container vessels that call in North America call at the Port of Long Beach. Uh, throughout this, what we feel is there's going to be some ports that are going to be winners, some ports are going to be losers. Uh, we can't control what they decide to do. What we can do is invest, as we are, uh, in the development of the Port of Long Beach to be uh, attractive to that business. And we feel we're getting there real quick, if not there right now. Jim Newsom, head of the Port of Charleston, said yesterday to us that, that he thinks that that's one of the great vulnerabilities of ports. If we don't treat our truck drivers better, they're going to go away, and mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to move those containers around. What's going on in Long Beach with regard to truckers? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the turn time study is, is uh, what we're doing to address that. Uh, we're working with the trucking organizations and the terminal operators to uh, first identify uh, where is the constraint? There's actually data that was just released uh, right here in December of turn times for the various terminals throughout the Port of Long Beach, and it's, it's being done in conjunction with the Port of LA. We think with that, then the the, we'll be able to identify where the chokehold is and then take the corrective action that we need to do. But, but we at the Port of Long Beach agree with you. Uh, truck drivers are a vital, vital component uh, to this and uh, they can't afford uh, to be spending time uh, non-productively sitting in a queue line. We need to be able to allow them to turn that cargo, make a, uh, make a good living in doing this. So we're working hard to keep the truck driving element uh, alive and well. Well, Al, it certainly sounds like you've got your hands full with all these challenges, but it certainly sounds also like you're making progress. Uh, and I want to thank you for sitting down with us today. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here.